hey guys welcome back to the channel so in today's video we're gonna talk about what are the difference between a new edge mustang gt and an 03 and 04 cobra aka the terminator and why do we see such a big gap in price difference between these two cars that share the same body and the same chassis and just yes, basically the same interior all of that and more coming up right now First, let's go over a little Mustang history. When the new S Mustang GT was introduced back in 1999, the horsepower rating was 260 horsepower and 302 pound-feet of torque. Thanks to the PI heads or performance improved heads that allowed the 4.6 liter to breathe more and make more power. An increase of 35 horsepower. That might not seem a lot, but the new GT was a lot quicker than the previous GT. When tested by car and driver in 1996, they ran 0 to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds and the quarter of mile in 15.1 seconds at 92 miles per hour. Now, the new 99 GT ran 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds and the quarter of mile in 14.1 seconds at 99 miles per hour. So it was a full second faster in the quarter of mile thanks to the new heads and new PI intake manifold. The GT was shiny in 1999 for four compared to the Cobra. The Cobra produced 320 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque that in paper looked really good but when car and driver tested the Cobra against the competitors, the LS1 Camaro and Trans Am, the Cobra was way slower than those cars. There was no way that the 99 Cobra was producing the advertised 320 horsepower. Team's Cobra runs a far more sophisticated engine, spotting the GMF body 65 cubic inches but winding higher with 32 valves and four cams to make its 320 horses. But the power is not readily available. The yeah, odd thing is that, that we don't really see it on the track. Uh, and you don't really feel it on the seat of your pants either. Uh, it's still impressive. The engine makes great noises. But it doesn't have the real broad, brawny torque band of the F-bodies, and uh, it shows. Uh, you have to wind this engine out in order to get the power out of it. And by the time you find the power, you've lost. This Cobra needed six full seconds to 60, while a Camaro and Firebird could make the jump in 5.3. I'd still rather have the engine of the other two uh, vehicles, despite the fact that uh, it's not as sophisticated. The 1999 Cobra was tested and ran the quarter of mile in 14.2 seconds and 99.7 miles per hour. Actually, slower than the Cobra's little brother, the Mustang GT. That led to a recall in 1999 and the cancellation of the 2000 Cobra other than the super rare 2000 Cobra R. In 01, the Cobra was back and then it went away for a major overhaul for the year 2003. By 2003, the Mustang GT had not received any mechanical upgrade other than a new transmission in 2001, the TR3650, to replace the T45. Now, the Cobra went from 320 horsepower overrated, meaning that the motor was not producing the advertised power back in 1999, to having a 390 horsepower underrated motor meaning that the motor was really a 420 to 440 horsepower due to what these cars were putting to the wheels on a dyno in stock form is all about performance and value 390 horsepower 70 more horsepower than the prior model it will be simply the best performing and most powerful factory produced mustang ever just wait till you see it and just wait till you hear it. This is the Cobra that people have been waiting for. And when you get a, a chance to come up and look at the product up close, I think you're going to see that we paid attention to detail in just about every aspect of the car. We believe we've delivered the best Mustang ever. No question about it. 
this is kind of my favorite part, under the hood, supercharged 4.6 liter dual overhead cam V8. Uh, you've already heard that this thing pumps out 390 horsepower and 390 foot-pounds of torque. I think you'll agree it has a clean, unique, and purposeful look. We've changed the front and rear fascias on the car to clearly distinguish Cobra from the Mustang GT. The front fascia has a much, much more aggressive look, and it also helps to get more air into this engine compartment. Now, the hood has been redesigned. And it has uh, some flow-through scoops that help vent the hot air also from the engine compartment. Now, if you look on the side, the rocker panels have been reshaped, and they're very uh, clean, simple, vertical surfaces. The rear, fe the rear fascia features the Cobra. Inside, we have a new, more supportive uh, set of seats. The new Cobra also received a brand new Tremec T56 transmission, aluminum dry shaft, and a revised new IRS suspension on the back. A new motor and aggressive look and the best part, a supercharged motor with a fully forged roading assembly capable of holding up to a thousand horsepower. The Terminator Cobra could run 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds and the quarter of mile in 12.9 seconds at 111 miles per hour. The fastest time recorded in a completely bone stock Cobra was 12.6 at 113 miles per hour. This was done in a coupe. The GT now stands no chance against its big brother, the Cobra. The Cobra was now in Corvette and Viper territory, way past Camaro and Firebird. This ends all the debates. This car was intended to come to hit the market, uh, give the customers everything they've been uh, clamoring for for some time now, and on the competitive front, just end the debate, terminate the discussions. What we have here is Corvette level performance, way past Camaro, 0 to 60 in 4.5, and a 12 second quarter mile at 111 miles per hour, actually quicker than the Corvette Coupe. Incredible. The MSRP for a 2003 GT was $23,705 versus the Cobra MSRP of $33,460. So for about $10,000, you could have upgraded to a Terminator Cobra. And let's not talk about that you could have loaded up a GT all the, well, all the way to about 28K if you picked a premium convertible top. So now for about 5K more, you could have upgraded to an old 3 Cobra. We all know in 2020 that the Cobra has held its value tremendously and has even began to increase value in the past 10 years or so. So buying a GT brand new in 2003 was not really all that financially smart. Now that we know a bit about the history and difference of these two cars, let's talk real world and how do these two cars compare. The layout is the same. The radio is the same. The buttons are the same. Now, where are they different? The steering wheel is thicker in the Cobra. The shifter is different. And the most obvious parts, the seats are different. The Cobra seats feel amazing compared to the ones on the GT. The bolstering on the side of the Cobra are just like the ones that you find in the racing seats. The GT, not so much. One negative, the GT seats don't really hold you well on a curve. One positive, the GT seats are softer and more forgiving than Cobra seats. Probably a little bit better for a long trip, but I still much rather have the Cobra seats. The quality is a lot better and I really like the sway in the middle. There really isn't an argument here. The Cobra just looks 10 times better than the GT. That's why you see so many GTs with Cobra parts out there. The O3 and O4 Cobra are in the conversation for the best looking Mustangs of all time. They feel completely different behind the wheel. I was so surprised when I drove my Cobra for the first time. I was thinking that it was going to feel really similar to the 2004 GT that I had at the time. I was wrong. The steering feel is different. The shifting experience is completely different. The low end torque is different. The sound of the four valve with the supercharger is completely different. It just sounds deeper, even at idle. We all know that the supercharger screams and sounds amazing.
The IRS makes the car feel a lot more comfortable and stable going over bumps and road imperfections. You also feel more inspired confident when going around turns. They're both comfortable. The Cobra has an edge because it has an extra gear and the IRS makes for the ride a lot more smoother and nice. The GT was a really good car for its time. It has one of the most reliable engines ever built. Those two off motors are amazing and with boost can make a ton of power, but you cannot replicate the Cobra feel unless you have a Cobra and swap over everything that makes a Cobra a Cobra. That's why you see the immense gap in price between these two cars, besides the fact that the Cobra was a limited production car and the GT was not, so they made a ton more GTs than they made Cobras. All right, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a ton. And I want to apologize because my voice was bad throughout this video. I got sick this week. But if you made it all the way till the end, I appreciate it. And I just want to say thank you. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.